Armando Hasurugan Biology and Medicine videos, please make sure to subscribe, join the forming group. For latest videos, please visit Facebook Armando Hasurugan. Uh, here you can also like, please. And here you can also ask questions, answer some questions, and post some interesting things, such as your artworks. Or send them to me, please. And you can also change the quality settings to the highest one for better graphics of these videos. So we're going to talk about membrane proteins in this video. And there are many types of membrane proteins. There are channels, there are transporters. But we're going to just look at the two types, first of all. The, so the two main types of proteins in a fluid mosaic model. And these are the integral proteins, the one that spans the membrane, and the peripheral proteins, the one on the inner membrane. So here is the integral protein, and here is the peripheral proteins. Now the integral protein and peripheral protein make up the fluid mosaic model. So let's learn a bit more about integral proteins. Integral proteins are membrane-spanning peptides because they have a hydrophobic region and a hydrophilic region as well. The region in the middle is hydrophobic and so stays within with the lipids, whereas the outer regions are hydrophilic. Integral proteins can also be lipid-linked and they are removable by agents that interfere with the hydrophobicity, so the hydrophobic region of the protein. So let's look, about, let's look at peripheral proteins now. Now, peripheral proteins are internal proteins. So they're on the inner leaflet, of the membrane. They can be bound to an integral protein, and they can also be bound to a lipid membrane. Or, like this, they could be lipid-linked. So let's look a bit more um, on integral proteins, specifically. So here, I'm going to draw the membrane bilayer again. Extracellular fluid here. And here we have the integral protein. And consisting of the head group, the amino group, and also the carboxyl group. The integral protein, now the classic shape or the structure of the integral protein, which spans the membrane, is an alpha helix structure. So it's alpha helix. Now this area, which is within the membrane, usually consists of nonpolar amino acids because they're usually hydrophobic. And around the outside, such as here, it is charged amino acid because they, are, they can be hydrophilic. Same here. This section here, carboxyl section, is also charged amino acids. There are a variety of alpha helix spanning proteins. And so now let's look at the six different types of these alpha helix spanning proteins. Now type 1 is a single transmembrane protein with the amino group, the amino domain at the, in the extracellular fluid and the carboxyl in the intracellular fluid. Type 2 is the opposite. It's still a single transmembrane uh, helical protein, but the amino group is in the intracellular fluid and the carboxyl group is in the extracellular fluid. Type 3 is a multiple transmembrane helix in a single polypeptide. And so this is usually uh, initiates a conformational change, for example, from the outside to the inside, such as a receptor. Type 4 is also a multiple transmembrane protein, but for different polypeptides. And so they assemble together and amplify response. The same response, for example. Type 5 proteins are held to the bilayer primarily by covalently linked lipids. And type 6 have both transmembrane helix and lipid anchors, as you can see. Now, let's look at a bacteriorhodopsin, which is a membrane-spanning alpha helix protein. And it consists of a single polypeptide chain that folds into seven hydrophobic alpha helixes. The amino group is in the extracellular fluid and the carboxyl group is in the intracellular fluid. So how do we know how this bacterial rhodopsin actually looks like? How do we know its structure? Well, by sequencing the amino acids and by knowing the polarity of the amino acids, we can measure the hydrophobicity of each amino acid in the given area. So for example, to measure the hydrophobicity, we can do this by measuring the free energy change of an amino acid when we move a particular amino acid from a hydrophobic solvent 
to water. And by measuring this hydrophobicity, we, can, we yield a hydropathy index of each amino acid in that whole protein structure in the membrane. And so we can draw a graph, a hydrophobicity index graph. So here on the x-axis, we have the residue number, which is the amino acid sequence, you can say, the protein, and the hydropathy index on the y-axis. There's a red line in the middle, which indicates that a particular amino acid that is hydrophobic will be above this red line, and amino acid which is hydrophilic will be below this red line. So looking back at the protein structure, the bacterial rhodopsin, we can measure the hydrophobicity of the amino acid sequences within the uh, bacterial rhodopsin, and then plot it on this hydropathy plot, essentially. So the bacterial rhodopsin will look something like this, from the amino group to the carboxyl group. And as you can see, the amino group, which is the front, and the carboxyl group, which is the end of the protein, bacterial rhodopsin, are hydrophilic. And that is why they are facing the fluid, the intracellular and extracellular fluid. So here we have the amino group and the carboxyl group. And this red area are hydrophobic. And these hydrophobic regions, you can say, are the seven alpha helical proteins which are in the actual membrane protein because they're hydrophobic. So I hope you understood that. You can compare it. You can see how the amino acids, amino, amino groups on the outside and the carboxyl groups on the outside as well. Now, you might think, or we might think that alpha helix are the only membrane spanning proteins, but this is incorrect. There are actually beta sheets that uh, span the membrane, such as FEPA and another one called o OMPLA, which is a channel. And I'll not really talk about this, but it's just interesting that to know. there are also beta sheets that span the membrane, not only alpha helixes. And so that concludes this part one of the membrane protein videos. Part two will look at the peripheral proteins. Um, thank you for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you.